What's up guys, it's Tom with Veris Engineering and today we're going to be going over the install of your high downforce front splitter kit on your Toyota Supra. This kit features two front diffusers and increased surface area on your splitter in order to give you more downforce on the front end and hopefully reduce those lap times. So with all that said, let's get into the install. All right, so as far as kit components, we have the splitter halves, so one and two right there. We have air dam halves, one and two. We have the splitter brackets, which hold the splitter together. We have the crash beam brackets, which all bolt to the crash beam, and then go to the splitter brackets, which are shown here. And then we have the air dam uh, rubber seal, which helps protect the paint. And we have two templates right there, which we will show you where those go on car here in a second. You're gonna receive two uh, front diffusers and a hardware bag with of course a nice sticker in there for you. As far as tools required, I recommend a cutoff wheel, Dremel would probably work or a small jigsaw would work. That is for cutting the holes in the bumper. I have a drill, various drill bits. You need something around the 3 8 size uh, ultimately for the rivet nuts that we will install have a 10 millimeter wrench it's a good idea I don't know if it's actually necessary but definitely a good idea to have we have a 10 through I believe 3 millimeter allen wrench I believe we use 10 4 and 3 but it's a good idea to have all of them available 9 16 wrench for the rivet nut tool we have an impact that's a good idea to have um, for tightening the air dam as you'll see um, basically you kind of need something with um, that, that spins up the bolt and keeps the serrated nut on the top of the air dam um, stationary basically and uh, yeah that's all the kit components you'll need you probably need uh, some tape to hold on the templates but otherwise that's all you need all right tools we need to install our front diffusers on our Toyota Supra front splitter we need a drill half inch drill bit, 3 16 drill bit, seven millimeter wrench or socket, a ratchet, two and a half millimeter Allen key or socket, a straight pick or scribe, a marker or paint, uh, or paint marker, a cutting tool of some sort. Uh, essentially, uh, we'll have to cut the fender liner a little bit to clearance the front diffusers. So I have an air saw, you could use a knife or a cutoff wheel and we'll need a hammer to get the two pieces of the splitter to, uh, together. All right, so we have removed this side's plastic underbody panel, a bunch of eight millimeter heads. Um, they're all over the place, but basically just follow and remove them and then remove that. And then we will tape the uh, template on. All right, at this point, the uh, template is installed. Basically we use that location on the bumper and that location, as well as this line, which you can kind of feel there's a line underneath it. Um, this should be basically right here, should be like the back edge of the, the bumper. And then this one, you can't really feel anything. It doesn't really help you there, but um, otherwise that is the uh, template basically fully installed. All right, so right now I have drilled holes, these two, We'll basically make lines to the edge of the bumper. I had to make four holes on this one because we'll have to cut that out completely. I'm gonna pull off the template now and then use a Dremel to uh, basically go from hole to hole. All right, so at this point, we've put holes into the bumper. There's that one and there's that one. Then we can grab the small brackets. Where's it at? There we go. We slide that up into the hole that we just made and then we mark two holes with a sharpie so that we can drill two holes for rivet nuts to be installed. Do that same thing on the outside like so. I accidentally made that mark but it's that one and that one and then we'll drill it real quick and then put some rivet nuts in there. All right so at this point we have all the rivets installed on the crash bar. And then we have to install one rivet into the bumper and that's a plastic rivet. And basically that hole is already there from the factory. We just need to enlarge it to 3 8 inch and then install that. That's what it looks like when it's installed. And then 
on the ground I've done some prep work. I've basically installed these upper brackets and the lower brackets together. You don't have to do that, but I feel like it's a lot easier to do it off car versus doing it on car. And that's why we put this through oval here so that you can install it. Um, you use the 16 millimeter button head cap screws, small washers and nylocks on the back. And then those already have uh, floating nut plates installed on them. So that should be uh, nice for a little bit of um, extra wiggle room and clearance. All right, let's install these diffusers. So I got a piece of wood under here just so I have a flat surface that I can drill through. Uh, what I've done is set the uh, diffuser into the recessed portion of the bottom side of the splitter. And I'm gonna take my pick and I'm just gonna score score the top of the splitter, I'm sorry, diffuser. Pull it back out and you can see the mark there. I'm gonna basically drill that mark out using a 316 drill bit. Just like this. Holder. I can place this thing back into the recess like so. And what I'm doing now is just looking to make sure that the holes line up and they do. So we're going to go ahead and install this one bolt and then we're going to do one more that will hold on uh, that will hold the diffuser to the splitter and then we can mark all the holes, drill the rest, and then we're good. All right, so what I've done here is put our 20 millimeter M4 uh, bolt through the bottom with the corresponding nylock nut on the top. Basically just snugged it up. Uh, all we're doing here is trying to keep this thing located so that it's not fighting us when we go to drill the rest. So now that I've got that in place, same as before, through the top, use your pick or scribe and mark the bottom. Then take the diffuser back off like so. Grab your drill. Enjoy your second hole. All right, so basically you're gonna put a bolt, uh, an M4 bolt into both the holes you just drilled. And then you just basically get to drill all of the other holes and then go ahead and install the bolts. I'll show you what that looks like when we come back. All right, so we have all our holes drilled out and the bolts are installed. We have the M4 button heads installing, going up through the splitter from the bottom. No washer on this side, uh, just for a little bit better clean or a little bit cleaner airflow across the bottom of the splitter. M4 fender washers on the top with your M4 nylock nuts. Only tighten these about an eighth of an inch past, turn, uh, past bottom. Don't need to kill these. The nylocks will prevent it from backing off. So this is what it should look like when you're done. Fit nice within the countersink, counter bore, whatever you wanna call it. Once you have that done, repeat the process for the other side if you haven't already. And then we need to assemble the two splitter halves with the puzzle piece fingers. All right, so let's assemble the two halves of the splitter. You'll notice you got these puzzle piece uh, looking fingers um, in the front and back. <clears throat> I like to set this up on a block of wood just to help uh, protect things. Personally, I prefer doing this on the ground. So all you need to do is grab your hammer, uh, Probably a soft face is the best. And tap it until it's flush. And then try to find this two by four.
on the splitter blade, we have two piece, we have a two piece splitter blade and that's to keep our costs down for you guys. Um, basically you have to um, assemble the two units together and it's really simple. We use M16 by 16 millimeter button head cap screws, a fender washer on the bottom side, and then a nylock with this washer plate on the back side. And that connects the two units together really nice. And then um, I've also installed our air dam onto the splitter. The only two bolts that are tight are these two right here. All these other bolts are loosely installed because there's wiggle room. Let's see if I can, it wiggles a bit and that's, a, that's to allow it to conform to the bumper a bit better. And we need to do that once the splitter is on the car. So right now it's loose. Um, all these nuts are, are to the point where they're tight, except that one, but we'll fix that real quick. But all the nuts are tight so that when we go to tighten them from the bottom side, the serrations dig into the aluminum and then we can fully tighten it on car. At least that is the hope. Um, we are now ready to more or less install this front splitter on car. Uh, no, we're not. We have to do the brackets first. So we'll do the brackets, then we'll install front splitter. So at this point, we've installed the brackets. We are using M6 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws with fender washers. So if you look at this one, there's a lot of adjustability. It can move left and right and forward and backwards. So that is, allows um, some some differences between people cutting the bumper and the and the bolt holes or the rivet holes in the in the crash beam. Um, hopefully everything goes together correctly, but this slop is specifically for that. Um, but anyways, we'll start with it flush front and rear on the crash beam. All right, so right now I have the three rear bolts really loosely installed. So this allows me to pivot it up and check out how these locations line up with the slots on the splitter. So basically I'm gonna find a hole that kind of lines up, put a bolt in it loosely, and then I can kind of go around to all the other ones and figure out which brackets may need modified. And I think I'll actually leave the splitter on in this case and then I can actually loosen the bolts up there and and move it as needed and then recheck it it'll be pretty simple but once it's installed it'll be able to be removed and installed pretty easily as long as the brackets don't get removed as well okay so we got the splitter up on the car and just real quickly I want to go over something you'll notice that the diffuser uh, will prevent the splitter from sitting up all the way um, so that is one issue that we have. Another issue we have is that is some of the hardware, uh, the nut and a little bit of bolt might be hitting the bumper uh, inside of the, uh, well, inside of the bumper area. So what we wanna do is I temporarily bolted this up and what I'm gonna do now is actually pretty simply just gonna push up on the splitter a pretty decent amount so that I know that that hardware is contacting on the bumper and then it should make a little bit of a mark. So here is the mark that the uh, end of the bolt slash nut uh, from the front diffusers actually made uh, from pushing up on it. Basically, we need to clearance this just a little bit so that we can get everything to sit flush up against the bumper. Easy solution here. I'm just gonna take a half inch drill bit on that mark Hopefully it doesn't walk. And go a hole. Uh, then if you want, you 
can make it a little bit prettier. Although, it's not going to be seen, so that's up to you. Now we have clearance for the bolt. All right, so you'll notice that even after that, we still have some room to go. The diffuser is hitting the wheel liner here. So what we need to do is basically just trim the wheel liner uh, in this area, just so that we could fit the front diffuser. So what we're gonna do is basically just mark the outlines of the diffuser and I'm just gonna guesstimate, probably have about a half an inch. And so, draw a line across. We're gonna trim that off, and when we come back, hopefully this thing's fitting up nice and flush. All right, guys, so we finished trimming this, uh, the line that we had here uh, off camera and now we should have enough room for the diffuser to go up. I have some bolts already kind of threaded in to kind of help me. And I'm going to, this isn't permanent, but I know now that the splitter is fully bolted up and this uh, front diffuser is sitting nicely in the fender well. So let me show you that real quick. So now you can see how this fits in here. Now that I know that this is good, we can go ahead and finish the rest of the install. All right, so I really need four hands right now, but I'll try and show you what I'm talking about. So right now the air dam is loose and you might be able to see there's a tiny gap there. And basically the whole air dam moves. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. Let's see, I can't really. So basically we're gonna push on that. I don't know, if, can you see that move? We're gonna push on that and then tighten the bolt from below and basically make the entire air dam fit. The front's pretty good right now, but it'll get a little better and make it fit really nice along this very odd shape. And then uh, overall, I think the install is done. We just gotta do a bolt check and make sure we tighten all the bolts. And then we'll do some quick testing, probably throw, throw a few guys on there, you know, for, for Instagram, Facebook. Everyone likes to see people on car parts. All right, so I went around the entire air dam and tightened all the bolts. I also cleaned it off real quick from some of the bug guts, but that looks awesome. It really turned out really great um, as far as fitment. Uh, it seals up really nicely against the front bumper in all the locations. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the install of the High Down Force Front Splitter Kit for your Toyota Supra. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at barristashengineering.com. Until next time, we'll see you later.